As you can see, the bike is completely torn apart. It is time for the valve clearance check. Let's get to it. Hey, how's it going? Welcome to my channel. As you can see, the bike is completely torn apart uh, because I'm doing a bunch of maintenance right now. And in particular, we're gonna do the valve clearance check, which I expect I'm gonna have to replace the shims on the valves, which is gonna be a lot of work. Now, I am not gonna go through step-by-step step how I got to this point. That would be an hour long video, but I will just quickly go through all of the things that you need to do in order to get to your valve cover and be able to take that off. And then we'll go from the point of, once you get exposure to the valve cover of taking it off, and then I'll go step by step from that point forward. But to get to this point, um, I'm not gonna do that just because of how long the video would take. And some of this plastics are not necessary uh, to take off like the whole back end. I'm working on some other things here. So let's get to it, uh, summarizing what you need to do in order to do a valve clearance check yourself. So I started off by taking crash bars off, and then I also took the skid plate off. So I would recommend doing that. Now, I have also taken the radiator out. So if you don't know how to remove the radiator or drain the fluid, there is a drain plug at the bottom of the water pump. Just pull that out, pop the lid on the radiator, and it'll drain out. And then just take the clips off of the hoses. And then you've got two fans on either side, three screws each, back those off. Um, they are attached and hanging by some zip ties. So those are hanging off the front. And then the overflow, just pull that off. And then that gets you to the tank. The tank is quick and easy to take off. There's two bolts on either side towards the back, one in the center. Now, in order to get the vents off, there are three long screws around the tank fill. There are three faux, three long. So if you start taking those off and you pull a short one out, put that back in and then do the alternating long screws. You only need to take those three off, then you can pop that off and then pull off the vents. There are two fuel line plugs that you have to pinch and pull off of the tank. There's the fuel pump connector, take that off. And then towards the front right of the tank, there is also the uh, fuel level sensor. So you gotta take that electrical connector off. Once you get all that disconnected, you can lift the tank and set it somewhere else. Now, I would recommend before you lift the tank off, once you get the vent valves off, put the cover back on the fill cover, screw that down so that there's no way fuel can come out and then move it over. Um, I have moved the fuel lines out of the way and I'll get to that a little bit closer so that I can see the top of the valve cover. That is where we are at. Plastics are off, tank is off, radiator is removed so I can get access to the front of the engine. Front fender is removed. Um, crash bars are removed, skid plates removed. So um, let's get to the next step, which the next step is going to be to remove the spark plug. All right, in order to take the spark plug out, you need a 14 millimeter thin wall spark plug uh, socket. So if you don't have one of those, you're going to need that in order to get it to fit down. Now, I'm not sure the camera is going to be able to see everything that's going on in here, but we'll pull the Okay, and I'm just going to reach down in here and not fit down in there. So the extension, ooh, let me show this. All right, that is the socket plus a three inch extension. It goes all the way to the bottom. So just know that that is super deep. All right, in order to get my wrench in here, I had to come in from the side. Just loosen that. All right, spark plug is out. It uh, actually doesn't look that bad. All right, I'm gonna poke a little uh, paper towel in the spark plug well, just to make sure nothing falls in it, any dirt or debris while I'm doing this. So I'm gonna start off with just a nut driver, see if I can, oh, no, nope, that ain't happening. Okay. Those are on pretty tight. Oh, there's not a lot of room. I might have to get a 10 millimeter wrench. 
Okay, that's two. Three. All the bolts are removed from the valve cover. There is a vent in the very back, the crankcase vent. And so I've got the clip off of that. So when I lift that, I'll pull the vent off. And then I should be able to take the valve cover out the front of the engine where the radiator was. So let's see what happens. There appeared to be a ground wire right under here that was blocking the valve cover from coming out. And it's super tight in here anyway. So I, I moved that. So hopefully this will slide all right so that's out okay we have the cams exposed the next step is to get it set at top dead center and in order to do that we have to go to the other side of the engine all right here should be the sight glass to look at the stator to know when it's at top dead center so we're going to take that off. You can see in there, there's the indicator. So when I get it to stop dead center, I will uh, show that. And there is also, we'll take this out, this plug. And when we take that plug out, then we'll have access to be able to turn the engine over. Something real quick, the size of this uh, Allen head here is something I don't have. It is really big. I just took a nut that fit in there and then took some pliers and just twisted it off. It shouldn't be that tight. All it does is give you access in here to turn the engine over. I need to figure out what size of socket to use in here. All right, very important. Make sure you're turning the engine counterclockwise. And inside I see a T with a line on this flywheel that I'll try to get an image of. There we go. So now I just need to make sure that the cams are also lined up. Now in here, you got a T for top. And on the other side, you also have a T for top. So that is top dead center. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to dry a spot here. And what I want is to mark cam chain. I'm not going to go top because it's not quite there. So I'm going to use a, a grease pen. I'll mark it there. I'm going to mark it there. So that way if I take everything off, I know where it's supposed to line up with the chain. I don't want to lose that position. That'll change the timing of everything. All right, this. Back of the engine are your intake valves here and here. And then at the front is your exhaust valves. There's one on each side of this clamp. So I've got to try to get a feeler gauge down underneath here. There is not a lot of room to do that. So um, it's going to be really hard to film this part. I'll do the best I can. All right, the intake, the minimum threshold is 10 thousandths of a millimeter. And the outside one is good. All right, that's good. Let's go to 15. So the intake is within spec. It's somewhere between um, 10 thousandths of a millimeter and 15 thousandths of a millimeter. 
10 millimeter fit in, 15 thousandths didn't. I went full range. I'm not going to try to figure out which one it stops at since it's within range. I'm going to move to the exhaust. I just finished um, checking the valves and both the uh, intake and exhaust are within spec. So the um, 10, 10 thousandths to 15 thousandths millimeters on the front was um, it was right where it needed to be. It was no wider than 15 and the 10 slipped in um, perfectly. And then on the exhaust, it was um, 20 doesn't fit, 15 does, it is within spec. So I'm not changing anything. I'm gonna start bolting this back together. All right, I'm getting the valve cover put back in. It is. Um, it is, is a little tricky. This is its tight quarters, and I don't have the smallest of hands, so it makes it oh, a bit challenging. But let's get that settled in. There we go. Now I'll put the valve cover screws back on. I'm going to torque those. Those were pretty tight, so I'll probably torque them to about. Uh, Eight, eight newton meters in these spots and then I'll get this new spark plug put in and then uh, basically start closing all this back up. All right I just put a new spark plug in since I was already in here and the service interval on the spark plug says 9,000 uh, miles which I think the reason it says that is the valve clearance is specified to be at every 9,000 miles. Now this plug here I went uh, 18,000 miles on it and it's it's still working fine it looks fine I did I put a new one in because I'm doing this now uh, important note is that I went 18,000 miles between valve clearance checks I had the original valve clearances checked at 9,000 miles and they had to make some adjustments that was done but um, and I changed the spark plug shortly thereafter because they didn't have any plugs uh, in stock when they did it so I ended up doing it myself and so I went 18,000 miles without a valve clearance check and without changing spark plugs. The spark plug looks fine. The valves are still within spec. So it's really up to you if you want to get it done. Um, after the, the first one is the most important because that's where everything's breaking in. Once you get that done, it's kind of up to you if you think you need to continue to do those intervals. Um, now that mine is still within spec and there's uh, enough room for it to, to close up as the valves wear down. I'm probably going to go another 18 to 20,000 miles between checks. You might disagree with me on that, but as long as the bike is mechanically functioning fine, I don't really see a need since it is well broken. As long as I maintain the oil, uh, I think it'll be fine. If you disagree with me, put that in the comments below. But I went 18,000 miles. Uh, valves are still within spec and spark plug looked okay. So new spark plug, we're good to go. Um, I don't plan on doing this again. Okay, so that is the valve clearance check. I did not have to make any adjustments. I didn't want to take the valve train apart just to demonstrate how to do that since I didn't need to. So if all you want to do is check your, your valves, um, you can do that. Make sure they're within tolerance. If they are out of spec, MC Garage did a really great video on just the engine itself on how to check the valves on it. I will leave a link in the description below if you want to see that. They have the engine out of the bike, so of course it makes it a lot easier, but they go through that process. So since all I had to do was check clearances, I was good. I didn't want to take it apart anymore. So if you have done this yourself and have any other tips or tricks that you think would be helpful, leave that in the comments below. Now I had mentioned before that I got the original valve check done at 9,000 9, miles. There was an adjustment that was made. I did not do another check until just now at 27,000 miles. So 18,000 miles later, everything was fine. I'm gonna let it go even longer uh, before doing it again, probably another 20K. If I even put another 20K on this bike, which saying the new 390 adventure that'll be coming out probably to the US shores in 2025 is on my radar. So I don't know if I'll still be riding this bike by then. Anyway, there is the valve clearance check. Now I still have a lot of reconstruction, putting the bike back together. I don't want this video to last for hours. So I'll just do that. It's just basically a reverse process of what you did. Make sure you paid attention to what you were doing or when you took things apart. 
Hopefully you got value out of this video. You can take a look and see if it's something you think you can do yourself or you want to take it into the shop. So let me know in the comments below if this was a value to you, if it gave you an idea if it's something you can do on your own or if you need to go into the shop and have it done. I'm a garage mechanic, not the best mechanic. I get a lot of uh, negative comments on the way I do things, but I still continue to run and, and get things done. So um, anyway, if you haven't done it yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Thanks for watching. Get out, do some riding, ride safe, and I will see you out there.